going to start by opening up a project in Digital Performer that I've created previously. I'm going to go to my Finder, and I'm going to go to Documents, and I'm going to look for the, my most recent project. Now, I could search it by name, and that will be alphabetical, and I could go to my last name, which is how I create all these projects, and I could look for the most recent one. That's it. I'm going to, here's my project folder. Inside the project folder is the audio files folder and the digital performer file. So I'm just going to double click on that and it's going to open up this project that I've previously uh, created. And earlier I deleted all the existing tracks and I added a new track, a MIDI track. Okay. And uh, the first thing I'm going to show you how to do, what to do is uh, name the track. This will be useful after you have uh, recorded some data. I haven't actually recorded anything on here yet. I'm just going to show you without doing that. But uh, after I've recorded something, I'm going to want to name the track something that, that will remind me of what I've played. So uh, earlier I was using a piano sound. And so I'm going to just, uh, I'm going to name this track Piano. And you would think that you could just click on it or double click on it and that would let us name it, but that's not how it works in Digital Performer. I'm going to hold down the Option key on my computer keyboard and then click on the track and it's going to open up a text field and I'm just going to put in the name and that's all we need to do for that. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a zero bar. Um, across the top here, these are measures and each one of these measures uh, represents four beats because we are in 4-4 time signature and we'll be talking about that in class here and uh, we're going to create another measure that's going to start before we actually start playing in measure one and that's going to be useful for putting data other than kind of note events uh, when, when we're actually playing notes in um, one of the things with serial transmission which is how uh, MIDI transmits data is it's not that efficient one piece of data has to travel along a, a line at a time and that's not that efficient and it's possible when we get a lot of tracks and a lot of data for things to bog down and it can actually slow down our sequence we don't want that to happen so I'm going to create a, a zero bar that's going to be a buffer and it's going to be, I'll be able to put some other data in there here's how we do that we're going to go up here next to the time signature there's a sequence menu with a, a, a little drop down arrow I click that it's going to open up this menu and I'm going to go down to set chunk start time and click on that and it's going to open up this window for us and it's going to say when when is it going to start the chunk and I'm going to and where by default it's going to be at measure one I'm going to just highlight that and when I did that it changed the number but I highlighted it and I'm going to type in a zero and then I'm just going to click OK and there now I have a zero bar. We're going to put data in there other than node events. Next thing I'm going to do is set up the click track. And the click track is going to, is going to provide a steady click, a steady pulse as the, uh, as the uh, sequence is going by so we can hear the tempo or the speed of it. You can see when I, when I hit play on my transport, you can see my position start, uh, marker starts to move and it's moving at a specific tempo and I want to be able to hear that tempo so I can play along with it so I'm going to click on my click icon right here in the transport I'm going to double click it and it's going to open up this window for preferences and you can hear already that there's an audio click which is fine but uh, sometimes that audio click on your workstation is not going to be very loud and we're going to want a MIDI click uh, that will be a little more uh, loud. I'm going to turn off the audio click for right now. You don't have to. You can leave that on. I'm going to turn on the MIDI click. And you can hear I start to hear some sound here. I'm going to go over to the column on the right here where it says MIDI click. And the first thing is accented. And I'm going to assign this to a synthesizer. On yours it's going to be the Juno D1. On mine, I don't have the Juno D1 hooked up right now. So I'm going to use this Apple software synth. We're going to go down to channel 10. Channel 10 is, is uh, for many synthesizers where all the drum sounds are. So I'm going to click channel 10 here. And you, can, you can hear I start hearing a percussive sound there. 
And what this is is beat one of the four beats in a measure. And so I want to hear that same type of click for the other four for the other three beats in a measure. So I'm gonna click in the normal section, I'm gonna assign it exactly the same. So I'm gonna to go to Apple Software Synth, and on yours you're gonna use the Juno D channel 10. I'm gonna use Apple Software Synth channel 10. And now you can hear I have a kind of a percussive sound here for my, uh, for my click track. I'm going to leave in options. I'm going to leave always click, which means I'm going to be, I'll hear it all the time when I'm recording, when I'm playing back. And I can always turn that off if I want to. But I want it to be set to always click. And I'm going to put audition click, which is why we can hear it right now. If I turn this off, we wouldn't be able to hear it. And then I'm just going to click done. And now my click track will be set up. So if I go back and turn it on in my transport and then push play, you can hear the click goes in time with the transport. And each one of these is four beats per measure. Okay. Last thing is what if I want this, this tempo to be faster or slower? It's actually very easy. I have a couple ways I can do it. Right here is a tempo slider. And I can just hold my mouse down and move it to the left is going to make it slower. Or to the right is going to make it faster. Oh, I missed it there. Okay. And I can set it to any tempo that I want. The other way is if I have a specific tempo in mind, if I know that my uh, the, the tempo that I want is maybe 80 beats per minute. I could just double click here and then I highlighted that. I'm going to type in a value and just click return and you can hear now the tempo slowed down to 80 beats per minute. And the nice thing about tempo is even while I'm recording or while the sequence is playing or something I can always change this tempo. Faster, slower, whatever.